All right, welcome to Rick's Corner. I have James Tangerlini with me. I got that right, didn't I? Yes, sir. And um, this is an, an odd situation because um, I schedule my guests. I have a lot lined up throughout the uh, throughout the weeks, throughout the months, throughout the year. And I was down in Gold's Gym, Venice, on Sunday just to kick back and walk around, ride the bike, and say hi to some old friends. And I ran into James. And um, I was at the water fountain, and you can take it from there. And what happened, James? Sure. Uh, well, I met uh, Rick Drazen. Uh Wow, there goes that. Uh, how'd that happen? So, <laughs> we, um, I'm so terrible on camera. No, just, okay. So, uh, actually I met Rick through the water fountain. I had just finished a set of doing some dumbbell rows, and I walked over to him. I thought I recognized him, and um, when I heard his voice, that's when I knew it was Rick. Yeah, he says, are you Rick? I said, no, it's my sister. <laughs> <laughs> so we started talking about stuff and training, right? Yes. And uh, we talked about a lot of different subjects. Yeah. I mean, it's it's good, you know, you go out and you meet the public and you get stopped a lot. And people stop me all over the place and want to talk about this and that. And then they email me routines and I said, I can't, I don't have time on emails to go, I don't have time to go through routines on email. I just don't have the time to set up for everybody. But we sat and talked about it and I thought it would be good to have you on the show because I have a lot of people that are legends. I have people that are future superstars, and I have actors and this and that. And then you meet someone from the gym who's just like they're ordinarily like everyday training, like all of you guys out there. Let's hear your perspective on training, right? Absolutely. And the same thing can happen to you. I mean, if I run into you somewhere and you say, "Look, I have something to tell. I want to talk about training, and here's my history, and my background." I'm open to having people on here because it's human interest. Everybody wants to know in public what the average guy does. Not the average guy. The ordinary guy who goes to the gym every day. And I, I see a lot of people, and I've asked people, and they're like, oh, I can't go on camera. I'm afraid. I don't know what to say. It's easy. You just talk about what you do. Right. You're just talking to me, and you're in my living room. Exactly right. And uh, it's not all that hard once you get into the, uh, you know, the mood of it. No. And, um, so let's start at the beginning. Sure. When you started training, you were how old? I was uh, about 13 years old when I first started training. And what inspired you? What inspired me was uh, going to Comic-Con every year, mm -hmm. and um, I would see Lou Ferrigno. And um, after a while, I wanted to know what he was all about, who he was, how he got so massive. And of course, you know, being a Comic-Con, you're surrounded yeah. by comic books. So. Oh, sure. Uh, seeing all the superheroes really inspired me. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to uh, develop a physique uh, like them, because for a lot of my childhood, I was fat kid. I was unhealthy, yeah. and, you know, it was... Uh, it was it's, you know, it's either one way or the other. You're either fat or skinny. Right. Yeah, you know, it's one or the other. And there's so many people that come up to me and they want to make a change, but they don't know where to take that first step. Right. You know, it's like, what do I do? Do I go to the gym or what? And it's the hardest thing in the world for people. Because if they go to a gym and they don't have an instructor, they just kind of look at stuff and they just do odd things. If they go to Gold's and they don't want to go to Gold's, they're intimidated by the guys that are in good shape. When I was there on Sunday, that's a whole different generation than I used to know there. There's some of the old guys, some of the new guys, but everybody's in shape. Oh, yeah. Every, they may not be the biggest, but they're at least in shape. Yes. And it kicked me in the ass. And I came back and I said to my girlfriend, I said, you know, I was in good shape back in those days and I'm still in good shape for my age, but I got, I can go the next step again. I got to cut back on my diet a little bit and change things around, hit a bit harder, even through the injuries. And it inspired me to want to train harder again. So you need that little fix every once in a while. That, you go there just once in a while, right? I do. Actually, I used to go there pretty often uh, throughout my teenage years, especially uh, from 16 and 17. But uh, I really never go there. No? You're, you're out in Moorpark? I am. Good so, gym? Uh, I have a few good gyms in the area. I'll go to uh, Moorpark Fitness. Mm -hmm. I'll go to the 24-hour uh, fitnesses since I'm pretty much centrally located in yeah. a lot of them. And I'll also go to KO Gym in uh, Ventura. It's okay. a great gym. Hardcore? Yes, yeah, very hardcore. That's what you yeah. want. What, when you started your routines, I mean, you had to have some knowledge of what, how to train. What was the first type of routine you used when you started training? First type of routine that I used when I first started training was actually given to me by Lou Fregno. Um What happened was uh, I was trained for football, mm -hmm. and I wasn't strong, and I wasn't skinny. So I wanted uh, to make myself better, so I started lifting with a team. And by lifting with a team and noticing Lou Fregno at the comic convention, uh, that's when I figured... Uh, I wanted to really push myself to maybe uh, meet him one day. Yeah. And um, as I made more and more progress, my parents surprised me one year uh, for a Christmas present to train at his gym over in Santa Monica. Yeah. How's his gym? His gym's uh, pretty uh, 
It's Pretty complete, nice. isn't it? Yes, yeah. very complete, very complete. It's a very good gym. Um, he has all the necessary equipment that he needs uh, in his own home. And he has the knowledge. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, he definitely yeah. has the knowledge. What kind of training absolutely. program did he give you? What'd you work? How'd you work it? Uh, he gave me a training program with uh, different body parts each day. So it was legs, back, uh, chest, and uh, shoulders, and arms, I believe. Okay. Yeah. And how many uh, times per week per body part? Uh, it would be one and a half because you would do four days on, oh, one I see. day off. It staggers on to the next week. Correct. Oh, that, that works okay. Yeah. It's not really a seven-day program. It's it's like a nine-day because you have your days off and then you, it goes the next week and you pick it up again. That's right. Yeah, that works out pretty good. What about, did he give you a diet? Uh, he did. He did. And, and it was pretty much just uh, very basic. It was a lot of protein. Um some moderate carbohydrates mm -hmm. and then uh, low fat. Okay. Yeah. Basic bodybuilding diet. Right. And you stuck with it? I did. And how long before you saw results? I saw results pretty immediately since uh, I was very young at the time. Uh, I saw results within probably a month and a half. And that yeah. was, it's the training, but the diet was the key. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And so many people don't realize that what you eat, I mean, it's like you're going to eat fattening foods, you're going to stay fat. I see guys in the gym training hard every day and they body never changes and then how do they eat they said oh, I don't really eat right I know I don't eat right and it's the whole thing right it, and uh, I, I've, I'll fall guilty into that because I'm sort of perma bulking for um, <coughs> breaking into my next step in bodybuilding and what is that uh, to compete in the open men division whereas before I competed in the uh, teenage and junior divisions. how'd you do with that I actually did very uh, very well uh, with the uh, teenage I competed with the ABA, and I did, um, and back in 2004, I did the Mr. Teen LA, which I won, the Mr. Teen uh, California, which I won, the Mr. Teen USA, uh, the Mr. Teen Olympia, and then I got second in their Iron uh, Gladiator mm -hmm. in that year, and mm -hmm. second in their uh, Mr. Teen Universe. That's that really year. good. That's a lot of titles. Thank you. And then uh, the next two years... Uh, two years after that, so 2006, I competed in the Muscle Mania World, where I got fifth. I competed with uh, Bradley Castleberry and Rob Riches. Mm -hmm. And then two years after that, I competed at the Muscle Mania America, where I placed fifth as well. You've done a lot of shows. Yeah. It's a good experience, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's like years ago, they used to have the bulking phase and the training down phase, and people do that. But the, I always found that when you go through the bulking phase, whatever you gain, you got to lose. Oh, yeah. You know, you might oh, not, yeah. and it's a lot of work. You gain all this weight, you're going to lose all this weight. And we always thought back in those days that, you know, train and grow, but do it at a slower pace and retain and always kind of semi-stay in shape. Right. Ken Waller was famous for gaining a lot of weight when he was off-season, then he, he shred it all down. It's not the healthiest thing to do. No. But you can gain a good quality muscle on a slow, a slow gain, but it will stay with you. Right. And you're right, always kind right, of like, right. I mean, the whole lifestyle of bodybuilding is to look good all the time. And back in the 40s and 50s, the Steve Reeves and those guys looked good all year round. It wasn't right. about contests, it's about lifestyle. I'm a bodybuilder, here's how I stay in shape. And you don't say, oh my God, you're fat this year. Oh, it's off season. Well, it was on season 24 7 because it was a lifestyle. Right. That so, makes a lot of sense. So, you change your routines throughout the year, or how do you do this? Yes, sir. Um, well, when I first started, uh, I followed the bodybuilding routines for quite a while, mm -hmm. quite a number of years. And uh, through that, I built a very good base for myself. Um, then I met several uh, individuals who really influenced me. Uh, the first actually was um, Fred Hatfield and Tom Blatz mm -hmm. through uh, their training of ISSA mm -hmm. and through uh, Dr. Hatfield's book mm -hmm. uh, or his books. Um, Hardcore Bodybuilding, a Scientific Approach, as well as his second one, Power, a Scientific Approach. And I use those exclusively uh, throughout my uh, early and late teenage years. And they work for you? Oh, they worked very, very, very well. Do you train heavy all the time now? Uh, I train heavy often, um, but not super, super often. I'll do a lot of circuit training. Okay. And I'll do, and by circuit training, I don't mean I do it to like burn a ton of body fat. I do yeah. it to get the squeeze. Are you talking about supersets? Yes. Yeah. You know, there's, I, I like supersets. The problem with supersets, not that there's really a problem. There is a problem in a crowded gym. Right. Because once you do something here and you go there to use that, and you go back here to do this, someone's using that. Right. And it's a pain in the ass. Right. Um, but they work. And then I tried supersetting, I don't know if you've ever done this, uh, the same muscle. For example, 
preacher curls with seated dumbbell curls. Yes. It works really well for about two weeks, and then you burn out on it. Then you got to go something else again. You know, and, and then right. there's the old supersets that worked for us back in those days was supersetting bicep with tricep. And you don't see a lot of people doing that because, like I say, it's scattered across the gym. But if you can do curls with tricep pushdowns and dumbbell curls with kickbacks or whatever, your arms just, you know, they, they swell up the whole time because you're working both muscles. Right. And we also, we also superset the chest with back. Bench presses and chins. That's just crazy. Inclines with one-arm rows or seated right. pulls because Gold's Gym in those days wasn't that crowded. You can get around. You can set everything up. Right. But those supersets really work. I mean, they really do. Now a lot of guys go in, they do like one body part and leave, and one party out the next day and leave. And I was guilty of that this morning. I went in and I did uh, shoulders. But I'll go in tomorrow and do arms. Normally I do shoulders and arms together. But when I got to look at the clock and I was getting, Starbucks was calling me to come have coffee. <laughs> I said, I'll just stick with shoulders and I'll go to arms tomorrow. You yeah. get to a point where you just, you take those days, you know? Yeah. But you're, you're going every day? I'm going uh, as many times as my body allows. I'll uh, usually hit everything... Um, uh, about the same frequency as when Lou taught me. Um, and I'll train everything heavy uh, using a three-day split, take a day off, and then hit the next three days using that circuit training method. That's a good idea. It's it's not bad. It gives your body a break. Uh, allows you to hit everything uh, with heavy concent tension. And, um, you told me something yes, uh, Sunday that, about your body weight being when you were, you were light. Was what? When I was stuck at um, the body weight compete after my teenage and junior competitions, yeah, I was two fifteen, and I needed to break that plateau. Okay, and how'd you break it? I broke it through a lot of eating, <laughs> of course, a lot of training, yeah. and uh, just um, making sure that I was getting the necessary uh, uh, compound movements in the gym each. And every workout. And then your weight went from where to what? I was 215 to 287. That's but a huge jump. At my lowest body weight, I was 165. Yeah, you said that to me. Yeah. 287. So, what in the hell were you eating? I was eating... Actually, I wasn't eating that much. What I did was I slowed down my metabolism so slow that I was only eating twice a day. And how'd you do that? Um, I just ate, ate crap. <laughs> just It was terrible. So I'm you, still having to pay for that by even trying to get into a decent <laughs> shape to even get into a decent off-season shape. That reminds me of the, of the movie Super Size Me. Yeah. You know, 30 Days of McDonald's. Right. And, and he gained all this weight and he got sick and high blood pressure and high cholesterol and all that. Right. I got sick just watching the movie. Right. I mean, it's like, I can't, I don't know, I can't eat that much at one time anymore. I got to spread it out in little amounts and... I just get too full too quick. Right. Luckily, I was able to uh, use that and use those calories for a lot of muscle building and strength. Right. I mean, I was my all-time strongest at that body weight. What do you think about the bodies today compared to the ones in the golden era? Uh, very, um, it's something I would not want to achieve myself. And um, that's pretty much why I've been uh, doing what I've been doing. Because, I mean, uh, that, that level, I mean... We're entering into a new age of technology, too. You yeah. know, the age of uh, <clears throat> transhumanism. Yeah. So what are they going to have? You know, gene therapy? Are they going to have, like, mechanical equipment on people yeah. com competing or some sort of uh, nano yeah, it's, technology? You know, there's a lot of you guys out there who really talk to me like the old school method of training, like Arnold and those guys. And then they say, well, he wouldn't compare to today's champions. Well, you can't really compare because it's a different ball game. And the guys today are so massive at 300 pounds plus, um, you know, and... and it is unhealthy. Bodybuilding is not really a healthy sport. Correct. You know, it's not really healthy. You're putting a lot of stress on your body and joints, and you're eating a bunch of proteins that are not good for your kidneys, and all this stuff you're doing wrong to look good. Even though you look good doesn't mean you're healthy. Correct. You know, people say, oh, you look great. I said, yeah, but the, it's like a custom car with a bad engine, you know. Right. Um, you just want to keep it balanced. And then what, what's your take on the drugs of today? How do you feel about that? My take on the drugs of today is yeah. that there are way too many. There are way too many, uh, and... I mean, if you're limited mm -hmm. by how much you have to take, um, that's that's not a good thing. You know, it's not a healthy thing either. Right. I'm not against it, and uh, I'm not necessarily for it, but I think um, there's a company I'm involved with. It's a wellness clinic now. I put their banner up, and they're out of Florida, and there's a Dr. Rodriguez, who I really totally believe in because uh, he tests everything, he blood tests, everything is done in his clinic, it's laboratory tested with readouts of what the strengths are, and I got some stuff from him, because at my age I need testosterone, my body does not produce it like it used to. And I took some IGF and some GH, and I got very, very good results at it, but I'm 70 years old, so therefore I'm a candidate for that. 
if you're 20 years old, you don't need it. Your body's still producing. Correct. So there's a time and place for everything. But there's a lot of people out there, oh, he's on drugs, he's on drugs. So what? You know what? This is the way the world is today. The custom cars are on nitro. I mean, everything has its, its, its thing that it does to make it better and better and better. Right. Is it healthy? No. But everything in moderation is okay. Is coffee healthy? Or, or, um, is alcohol and tobacco healthy? No. But they still sell it and everybody still uses it. Correct. So you can't pinpoint one certain thing like, uh, you know, like DEHA or DHEA, I mean, and um, oh, creatine. I said, oh, you can't take that. That's not legal. And it's like, yes, it is. You can buy it over the counter. But is it healthy? I, I don't think anything is in large amounts. Some model died from drinking too much water. Right. You know, so on the drug situation, if you're going to compete, you're going to compete against the guys that are doing it. You know, and if you want to win, then you got to do it. If you're doing it for every day, just health to look good on the street, you don't need it. Right. And that's absolutely correct. Yeah. And uh, that's what a lot of people don't realize. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, if you're going to win a show, yeah, uh, you should probably be thanking, you know, uh, the guy in the back alley who sold you everything to begin with. Exactly. Well, the guy in the back alley that sells it, it's, it's not necessarily real stuff. Right. Um, what do you think about proteins and, and supplements? I believe highly in uh, using those instead of you know, having to rely on everything else. It's funny because I, I like oatmeal. I use this company, myoatmeal.com, because they have like 22 billion flavors you can make. And so I order them and they give me dates and blueberries and stuff in there. So my afternoon snack, which used to be a chicken, which it still is a chicken breast once in a while, is I'll make that, that, that oatmeal and I'll add a scoop of whey protein. Right. Big scoop of all protein with hot water and mix it up. Now I've got my protein and I've got my carbs and it's, it's unbelievably good. Nice. Um, I sometimes slice bananas on it, and I don't have to put raisins because it's already there. But sometimes I'll scramble two egg whites and mix that in as well. So you've got the protein powder, you've got the egg whites on top of the oatmeal, and you've got all your protein you need with a carbohydrate push. Very nice. Yeah, it's uh, my son used to call it power snack. It <laughs> definitely works, and it tastes good, and it's like, okay, there's your 3 o'clock meal. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then an hour later, I'm hungry again. What I'll do is I'll buy uh, from a company. Unfortunately, I didn't get the okay from this company to uh, even say their name yeah. on a... But anyways, uh, I'm able to mix whey protein with a Swedish oat starch. Okay. And I'll add in glutamine, leucine. Um, that's pretty much it. And good do you, do you know what leucine does? Replacement, yes. Uh, the, it's the body, uh, the body first uh, metabolizes leucine during your workout. Right. Out of any other amino acid. Mm -hmm. uh, leucine is directly responsible from what they found for muscle growth. It also extends the life of the protein. Ah. Jerry Brain was on her. He said it'll extend another five hours in the body. Ooh, nice. That's nice. It's good to know that. And a lot of proteins have it already in them. Okay. But, I mean, if you're going to take it as a side supplement, it's also good. Ah. So where do you see your future in bodybuilding? When you have all these notes, have we gone through all these? No. Not even close. Is there something you want to add out of here? Because we're going to run out of time soon. Sure. Um, I wanted to uh, actually go uh, through the uh, importance of training as opposed to... Um, just purely relying on supplements because you need uh, the training factor. You need uh, the response. You need the adaptation mm -hmm. to actually make um, your body want to grow. Right. If um, if you don't do that, then you know it doesn't matter. You can take all the supplements in the world. You could eat all the food in the doesn't world. Doesn't do anything. Right. So I wanted. You have to create the need for it. Correct. Yeah. And uh, a lot of these people help me uh, see that and realize that. Who are these people? Uh, I've mentioned uh, Tom Platts and Fred Hatfield. Yeah. And, um, I mean, they've accomplished so much just themselves. Yes, they have. Uh, you know, uh, Fred Hatfield with his 1,014-pound squat. Yeah. Yeah, Tom Platts, you know, numerous right. uh, Mr. Olympia uh, competitions. And then we had a Canadian uh, strength and Olympic lifting coach uh, Christian Thibodeau mm -hmm. from actually T Nation. Mm -hmm. I read a lot of his work and I, I do a lot of uh, his different stuff including uh, variations of different exercises mm -hmm. which uh, I notice a big big difference in my muscle structure when I do them as well as uh, a lot of different training implements. And um, those are those are uh, some pretty great techniques. Yeah you know if you're getting results from it and, and you you're constantly changing the pattern of what your body's doing. Your body's creating a need for what you're taking in. And it's creating a need to grow because it has to meet the demands of what you're putting to it. Correct. If you don't meet the demands, then nothing's going to happen. Correct. The, uh, the next, well, I'll go through the list really quickly. When Jimmy Pacifico, son of Larry Pacifico, mm -hmm. was out here, 
he showed me a lot of great powerlifting techniques. Mm -hmm. I still go to his Facebook all the time to watch the uh, the videos that he puts up of mm -hmm. his him and his crew at Pacifico Power Systems training just with incredible intensity. And then, of course, uh, Ode Haugen of Team uh, Valhalla. He was here. Yes, yes. I actually saw the interview uh, yeah. yesterday. And um, it was a really positive interview. Yeah. And uh, Ode's a great guy. Uh, him and... Um, his whole team, including uh, John Eklund, he's an up-and-coming strongman. Uh, they both showed me a lot of great things with uh, using uh, different techniques to put on more muscle, especially for conditioning after the workouts. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's an old-timer. He knows his stuff. Right. And then, uh, let's see, there's also Kurt Dennis Jr., if you know who that is. I don't. He's this 315-pound uh, mass monster uh, out in... Um, I believe it's Tennessee, and um, this guy is just a giant, just a giant, and he uses uh, heavy constant tension, so he, he'll use a lot of free weights, superseted with a lot of uh, dumbbells and heavy machines to accomplish that muscle growth in the right range of motion, just like Ronnie Coleman did. Yeah, yeah. It so, takes a lot of work to do that. Right. you got to be in the mood when you go in the gym and lift those heavy weights. Right. I always said, you know, it's, with all the injuries I've had, I, I, I said the first set's killer. Does the first set really hard for you? Absolutely. Well, here's the thing you guys want to do. You want to bypass the first set and go straight to the second set. And right. leave the first set at home. Someone said, do you have any t-shirt that says that? Forget the first set, go to the second set. Well, the second set's always easier. You're kind of warmed up. Right. So why do I need the first if I can start with the second? Right. Well, I want to thank you for being here. I'm glad we got to do this. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure. And my where, absolute pleasure. Where can we honor. find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me on my Facebook. Okay, under? Uh, under James Tingerlini. Okay. And uh, I'm right there. I'm... Uh, the guy posing. <laughs> cool. I'm going to run your photos with this as well. Awesome. So thank you so much. Hey, James. thank you. It's okay. a great honor. You guys stay tuned for more Rick's Corner. I'm going to bring you more guests. It's only the first uh, the first week of February already, but i got good people lined up. Next week I have Mike Torsha. Mike Torsha has been around forever. He's the trainer with Mike Katz. He has American Fitness. Uh, he, he's everywhere. You'll see who he is when he comes on in great shape. I've known the guy about 40 years, so stay tuned for him as well, and we'll see you next time. time.